Today we're going to cover the strategy programming pattern and go through a simple implementation. Let's have a look at some code where all the logic is sandwiched into the cast spell method. It's a wall. It's impossible to read at a glance. It has five forks in the logic, also called cyclomatic complexity. On top of that, this class violates every solid principle. Now let's see how this should really look. This decoupled, easy to understand code is the power of the strategy pattern. In this example scene, we have three buttons. Our hero doesn't need to know anything about the behavior of any of the spells on the bar, only that when a spell is clicked, we're gonna execute the strategy for that spell. Let's get into it. Before we start, I wanna give a shout out to Arjan B whose comment inspired today's examples. Let's take a look at a class diagram really quick before we get into any implementation details. The player knows about spell strategies, but doesn't know any implementation details at all. All it knows is that there's a public method called cast spell that it can use. Implementation details are going to be hidden away into the concrete implementations of each strategy. This is going to decouple our code and make it very modular. So I put together the simplest heads up display code I could possibly think of, which is just to keep all the buttons in an array, add listeners to the on click events, so that they publish an event that contains their index number. That's really it. We're going to keep it super simple here. Our spell strategy is going to be an abstract class that just has one abstract method, cast spell, one parameter, which will specify where the spell originates from. In this example, that's going to be the player's transform. So let's start with the easiest strategy first, which is going to be the shield strategy. It doesn't move anywhere, it just needs to be instantiated. We'll make a new strategy that extends spell strategy, and I'll let Copilot fill this in here because it's just super simple. It's just instantiating something. But let's add, let's add a duration here so we destroy the shield as soon as the duration is up. Now I'm going to use an extension method here that's part of our common library that we use a lot on this channel and that is just to drop the orb down a little bit, just so that it's kind of partly in the ground, kind of like a half dome. I'll move it into its own file here. Let's set up a create asset menu attribute for it. Yeah, that looks all right. That's really all we need. Let's come over to the hero class and fill this in. So our hero is gonna need references to any of these strategies that we wanna execute. And so in on enable, on disable, let's register and deregister for the on button pressed clicks. Then we'll just have one method, cast spell, that will execute the strategy at a given index. Let's come back into Unity. I'm gonna add the hero component to our hero character here. And then I've got a new folder here for spells and I'm gonna go a little bit off screen here, but create one of these instances of a shield spell strategy. I'm gonna call it blue shield spell. Now I already set up a prefab for this, it's ready to go. I'm just gonna drag the reference into the strategy and then drag the strategy into the hero's spell list. Now if I go to play and cast it, voila. So that's really the strategy pattern in a nutshell. The hero doesn't know anything about the inner workings of the different spells and abilities. All it knows is that it has abilities and that it can execute them. Let's highlight that by making another one here. Let's make one that'll just fire a fireball straight ahead of the player. So I think this one we can just call projectile spawner strategy. Now Copilot filled this in pretty good, but I'm gonna change some names and I want it to go straight ahead of the player. So I'm gonna make one more variable here, vector three that is two units ahead of the player. Okay, let's put that into the instantiation call, but let's raise it up to maybe eye level of the player. Now, Copilot guessed incorrectly that I have a rigid body on my fireball, but I do not. But I did make a little helper class that will propel a particle forward, and I just called it Particle Mover. So we'll add that Particle Mover to our fireball. Now my Particle Mover has an initialized method that we can send in our speed with. So let's do that. And then I have one more component we can add to this, which will self-destruct our fireball after a certain amount of time. So we can add that component as well and then set its uh, duration there. Now, this is looking to be a little bit more complicated and is probably gonna get more complicated in the future. So the construction of our projectile should really be done in a builder and make it really easy to read. We can abstract all this complexity away into another class. So at the end of the video, I'm going to put a link to the video about the builder programming pattern. 
For now, I'll just let Copilot fill this out and just have a quick glance at it and make sure it's correct. You can pause the video if you want, but I'm going to carry on here and replace all of this construction logic with code that executes the builder methods. And I'm going to make this projectile builder class public, I think, because we'll probably be building lots of other projectiles for our game in the future. And we can probably just build on that and use it for lots of other things. So I'll make it public, move it into its own file here, and then continue. So I'll add a create asset menu here so that we can build these. I'm just going to do some renaming too. I think this should really be called projectile spell strategy. So I'll rename the class and file as well. There we go. And then one more thing, uh, we might as well send our duration right in here because we made a builder method for it and there's no need to have it hard coded. So we can make a public float here for the duration. Yeah, there we go. Now we can configure it. Back here in Unity, I'm going to make another instance of a new scriptable object that is the projectile. So I'm going to call it Fireball because I already made a Fireball prefab and drag it in there. And then I have to drag the Fireball strategy into the hero. Now I've already connected up the buttons, so here we go. Every time I click it, off goes a Fireball. And of course our shield is still working as well. I haven't done anything with the first button yet, but we're going to get to that one in just a moment. Okay, so for the third strategy, what I want to do is create three fireballs that spin around the player. So I'm going to call this one the orbital spell strategy. And so it'll extend spell strategy as well. Let's just move that over into its own file quickly. Now we can start with overriding the one method that we need to, the cast spell. Let's have a reference here for our orb prefab. We need to decide how many orbs we actually want to have, how far away they should be from the player, how fast they should spin around. And let's see, maybe, yeah, how long the entire spell should last. So to make these things spin around, what I'm going to do is create a parent, and the parent itself will just spin in place with each of the fireballs being a certain radius away from that. That way we're not calculating trajectories or anything. We can just spin the parent object around and it'll spin all of them. Let's create a method that will create the parent. Okay, that's straightforward. We'll just create it right where the player is. Now we need another method that will actually rotate this thing around. We can just call it rotate orb parent. Now all that thing has to do is spin in place, but I think what I'm going to do to spin this thing is use do tween because we could make it a little fancier in the future. So we'll set a rotation rate here that's based on our rotation speed and 360 degrees. And what we're going to do is specify that this object should rotate continuously around the vertical axis at this rotation rate. And it should complete every rotation in one second. And we want it to loop indefinitely, so I'm going to set that to a negative one with a loop type of incremental. And then we also want it to be spinning at a constant speed, so I'm going to set the ease to an ease of linear. Let's come back up into our cast spell method. We're going to iterate over the number of orbs and spawn a different orb around the origin point. I'm going to make some helper methods here for this as well. So one can be for spawning the orb. They'll take a couple arguments in there, but we'll make one more just to figure out the actual space around the circumference of this circle where we want each orb to be. So we can call that one calculate spawn position. Now, just before I forget, I'm going to add a call to destroy so that we remove the parent and all of the orbs that are children. Now, to figure out whereabouts around the circumference we're going to be, we can just calculate basically 2 pi multiplied by which index of our for loop we're on divided by the number of total orbs. And then using a little cosine and sine action, we can just figure out its position around the circle. So then for spawning, all we really need to do is instantiate the prefab at its origin point that we just calculated. And that's really it we can parent it underneath the orb parent right there adding a create asset menu yeah that's about it so let's come back into unity i'm going to create an instance of that scriptable object 
And we can call it something like, how about fire orb spell? And we need to drag our fireball prefab into there again. And then of course our hero needs to know about the strategy. So let's grab our strategy again and we'll just drag that right into here at the first position. So now when we play, there we go. Looks pretty good. A little bit short, might have to extend that duration a bit. But they're all working nice. Let's just make sure they all work together. Now, obviously in a full-blown ability system, you'd want cooldowns and all kinds of other fancy things. But that's a topic for another video. Now, just to make this a little bit more interesting, I wanted to show something else. I added one more method into the orbital strategy that will move the orbs up and down. And it uses do tween as well. I'm just going to put it on the screen here. So in case anybody's curious about that, it just moves them up and down in a random range. So they look a little bit different. And it uses vector3.reflect, which I think a lot of people don't know about. But basically, it's figuring out the tangent normal from the look direction. So because my projectiles have little tails on them, it's actually making them kind of face towards the camera. Now you could make them maybe face inwards towards the player too. That might be kind of cool. So after I finished recording this part, I started playing around more with the different spells and whatnot. And I thought it might be interesting just at the end to talk a little bit about how easy it is to make variety now in the, in the game that we have the strategy pattern implemented. All you really have to do is make more versions of your scriptable objects and you can use different prefabs. You can change all the settings and whatnot. So I've just replaced all the actions on the bar to different, for example, this shield. The orbs, I've made more orbs with a different prefab, a different speed, and the projectile going forward is just a little bit different too. Now keep in mind, I haven't made any code changes at all. The only time you would have to make code changes if you wanted a totally different strategy, or maybe you want to add another strategy to your existing strategies. For example, your spell strategies could have targeting strategies. So some of them might shoot straight ahead, but some of them might need some user input. So that would get into nesting your strategies or combining them together, which we won't get into in this video, but it's some food for thought. If you're interested in other patterns, I'm going to put a couple links up on the screen to other videos on this channel. So click the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in another one.